Hello, I'm Mark McGinley, and I am a professor and head of the science unit at Lingnan University, and I'm also the director of the core curriculum and general education program here. And I'd like to welcome you to tonight's event. We're very happy to be collaborating with the Plastic Ocean Foundation on a very important series of activities related to plastic pollution. And I hope you enjoy tonight's seminar on Build Back Better, Reimagining the Plastic Economy. So enjoy, thanks. Hi everyone, I am Paulina Wong, the Assistant Professor of the Science Unit. I think in the year 2020 has been a tough year for a lot of people and the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak in the early 2020 has completely changed our lives, changed the education and most importantly changed our perception of plastic forever. So perhaps due to the lockdown policies, industry shut down and reduced the level of transportation in many cities and countries, the carbon emissions and air quality may have slightly improved it earlier in this year. However, the massive consumptions of protective equipment such as face masks, gloves, gowns, which are commonly made of plastics, and also during the social distancing ended up with a lot of restaurants offering meals in takeaway plastic containers, people dining out less, and also buying more takeaways. So all of the single-use plastics are often non-recyclables and have posed an entirely different damage and impact to the environment, and particularly the ocean. So globally, more than billions of face masks are being made every day to cover the needs of the people worldwide. And actually, a lot of this masks will end up in landfills, oceans, or just scattered anywhere uh, worldwide. No one really knows when the COVID pandemic will be able to end, though there are now vaccines coming up. But in both the global climate change and also ocean pollution, we are indeed facing another big, big issues and challenges in our society right now. We seriously need to look at the way how we use and recycle plastics, and is there a way that we can remove it if possible? So hopefully we will be able to strike a balance between combating disease and also protecting the environment. So therefore, the science students of the Lingnan University have collaborated with the Plastic Ocean Foundation, a renowned travel organization worldwide, to develop an online education platform for the students in Hong Kong, while trying to facilitate teaching and learning during the difficult time when all the teaching needs to go remote and students need to learn online. So we believe the online resource platform would be able to help in educating and engaging our younger generations to be better aware of of the plastic crisis that we are facing right now, becoming an environmental steward and hopefully be able to turn the tide on plastic pollution. Thank you very much. This is Willy Kwong from the Plastic Ocean Foundation. Scientists and researchers always said if we don't do anything, by 2050 there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. People then optimistically think we have more than 30 years to save the ocean. But this is wrong. Plastic is a byproduct of fossil fuel. Fossil fuel is the major cause of climate change. Because of the global attention onto the fossil fuel industry, actually the industry putting more and more focus into generating plastic as a compensation to the loss of the profits in the fossil fuel industry. And therefore, plastic is not just talking about pollution to the ocean, but it is also talking about the climate crisis we are in the middle of. If we don't do anything, by 2030, the climate change will be unstoppable. A Plastic Ocean Foundation believes we have all the wisdom and intelligence to restore the ocean, recover the climate. The reason we are not moving quick enough is because there is obviously a communication gap between science and the general public and therefore we need to drastically invest into education. Plastic Circularity is our project with science unit of Nina University. It is an interactive website with videos, games, teaching materials that enable teachers to teach to use it instantly in their classes. We hope through these kind of materials we can provide teachers a very handy tool to educate students and empower their creativity to join hand to save the planet. It is our first step and we are going to also launch educative workshops in quarter one next year. Plastic circularity is an ongoing project. If you have any case study of circular economy, if you 
of any insights, articles, videos that can enhance students' and teachers' learning. Please let us know. Hi, welcome everyone to A Plastic Ocean Foundation lecture on plastic pollution. Today you will learn about plastic pollution and how it influences yourself, your local community, and the global community. Currently, we are facing major issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic when it comes to our and our loved ones' health and economical well-being. Since plastics are made out of fossil fuels, it seems that fossil fuel companies are counting on plastics to get them out of this economical crisis, especially as the world switches to clean renewable energy. Maybe most of you did not know that plastics are actually made out of fossil fuels. This creates a tremendous amount of greenhouse gases into our atmosphere and adds to global climate change and climate warming. With this pandemic, people will reach out more towards clean single-use items, which creates COVID waste. Masks being the major waste created during this pandemic. Masks are made out of pure plastic and will create a huge amount of waste within our oceans. The masks are not only mistaken as food, so animals will eat them and die, the, the straps of the masks also cause entanglement of the animals. Moreover, hand sanitizer bottles are also considered as COVID waste. We believe that an increase in takeout orders has also increased tremendously the amount of plastic containers, which can also be considered as COVID waste. By 2050, plastic in the oceans will outweigh fish. This is a prediction made from a report by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation in partnership with the World Economical Forum. Though by 2015, we will have more plastic than fish in the oceans, the large scale consequences of climate change can happen 20 years before that. Now, lots of people ask me what climate change has to do with plastic pollution. And as I mentioned before, and most of you are aware now, plastics are derived from materials that are made from fossil fuels, which is mostly oil and gas. So extracting and transporting those fuels, then afterwards manufacturing plastic creates billions of tons of greenhouse gases. Plastic, moreover, disintegrates in methane and ethylene, which even more increases the rate of climate change, perpetuating the cycle. So if we don't change our economy the way we live right now, in 30 years, we won't be able to contain climate change any longer. And we will basically be living a sixth extinction, which will be irreversible. Now the question comes up, is plastic good or bad? Plastic is very handy. We use it as shopping bags. We use it to hold our liquids, our drinks, our hand sanitizer. However, a lot of animals also suffer from our plastic use behavior, such as the seagull right here. This seagull was brought plastic items by its mother mistaking it for food. Its stomach was filled with plastic, basically causing this poor animal to die. However, at a Plastic Ocean Foundation, we are not of the opinion that plastic is evil, specifically because plastic has important values. Think about the use of plastic for medicine purposes. It saves an enormous amount of lives each year and is very important. However, 
It's how we see plastics that is the main issue. It's our addiction to plastics and our disposable behavior that creates the issue. Every single year, 8 million tons of plastic are put into our oceans, and a tremendous amount ends up in our surface waters. Here in Hong Kong, we actually add a huge amount to this 8 million tons. So let's have a look at the local statistics of Hong Kong. How badly is Hong Kong doing? Well, the Environmental Protection Department of Hong Kong releases a report every single year on waste statistics. The latest report showing the statistics in 2018 revealed that we dispose of 11,428 tons of municipal solid waste per day. Now, municipal solid waste entails waste that we create at home, in our schools, office buildings, and public buildings. Now, to put this in a more tangible context, we equivalented this 11,000 tons into the weight of Hong Kong taxis. So what happens is that every single day we dispose of 8,162 taxis per day, the equivalent of 8,162 taxis per day are thrown into our landfills every single day. And out of this totally total per year, only 21% is plastics. However, these statistics show weight and plastics are very light weighted. So this 21% in weight is actually not that much. However, if you look at it in sheer volume, it is much, much more. For example, 5.2 million is the amount of plastic bottles Hong Kong disposes of each day. This number was dis disclosed within 2016 and has only increased. Now actually, to put this in a more tangible context, if you were to stack up this 5.2 million bottles on top of each other, you would get the height of our ICC tower times 2,200. We dispose of 2,200 times our ICC tower in height per day in the form of plastic bottles. Now, where lies the responsibility? Because items like this are sold in Hong Kong, this is a single strawberry which is surrounded by plastic foam, plastic shreds in a plastic case covered by plastic. Our vegetables and fruits are packaged in plastic, double packaged, even triple packaged, unnecessarily packaged in plastic. However, we believe that we have a window of time. Every single one of us can make a difference, but we have to take action now. We see hope in the government. We see hope in global efforts being paid towards Build Back Better and Build Back Greener after this COVID pandemic. The Chinese government is putting a lot of effort into environmental protection, where they put the environmental protection in the top three priorities. China will curtail consumption of single-use plastics, and hopefully by the end of 2020, there will be a ban on non-degradable single-use plastic items, such as straws, bags in supermarkets, shopping malls, as well as delivery services. By 2022, non-degradable packages and delivery services is 
ought to be stopped from the, in Beijing and Shanghai and extending it to the whole country in 25 years. We also see hope in producers. The business sector is doing very well. A lot of very good brands are aiming at circular economy and closed loop design. For example, Adidas created shoes as well as Nike of recycled plastic bottles. It is excellent for business and appeals to next generation investors. It creates global attention on corporate environmental, social and government also raising drastic changes. That we see a shift from short-term profit-driven markets to making long-term positive impacts for a planet. Thinking long-term is extremely important. There's also a lot of hope in philanthropy. Global visionaries see the future in green economy, in green bonds, green markets. There's also hope with ourselves, within yourselves as individuals. So always read and get informed. Rethink plastics and your lifestyle. What do you do in your daily lives that could reduce the amount of plastic you use? Educate yourself and empower the people around you. Create a momentum for change. Be ambitious, set goals and believe that you can reduce the damage, even if you're surrounded by a lot of negative information. And demonstrate your determination. Prove your value, share with your colleagues, share at home, share on social media and write to your government. Always read and get informed before it's too late. When our parents were still very young, plastic became very popular. And it still is. Plastic is strong and light. And because it's so cheap, you can just throw it away. But hey, problem is, there is no away. Plastic doesn't break down, it only breaks up into small pieces. Almost every piece of plastic ever made is still on the planet. Most plastic waste comes from product packaging and single-use plastics, but also toothpaste and cosmetics contain microplastics. Every year, 8 million tonnes of plastic end up in the oceans. Plastic has become like a dangerous disease. These nurdles washed ashore on Hong Kong's beaches after a cargo container tipped during a typhoon. Plastic pieces look exactly like small eggs. No wonder sea animals eat them. This whale swallowed plastic. It's dying. This shearwater is dying. Look at what it has got in its stomach. Scientists think 90% of all seabirds have swallowed plastic. Many fish have swallowed plastic. We eat fish, so the harmful chemicals from the plastic can enter our bodies too. What can we do to put a stop to this ocean of plastic? What can you do to stop marine animals from dying from a plastic addiction? first thing to do is to start using less plastic because if we use less, plastic producers will make less. Do we really need to buy apples in a plastic bag? Do you really need that plastic straw with your soft drink? Secondly, plastic can be recycled. It's all about creating a circular economy. Plastic is processed and newborn nurdles are turned into new plastic products. The point is, plastic is indestructible, so it should not be disposable. Things like these can make the difference between helping the planet or hurting the planet.
The ocean isn't ours alone. It's the home of many other species, and our plastic pollution is hurting them. Sorry, seabirds. Sorry, sea turtles and all marine animals for putting plastic into your home. Now that you know the problem, you can help make a difference. Change is possible. It starts with us. Hopefully after the seminar and the video, you will have a much better ideas and understandings about the crisis of this pandemic related plastics, such as masks and takeaway containers, how they are posing tremendous damage and impact to the environment and particularly the ocean. So before the end of the seminar, I would like to introduce the launch of our plastic circularity education platform, especially developed for Form 1 to Form 3 students in Hong Kong. So in this education platform, we're trying to teach students about the negative impacts of plastics in our environment and introduce the concept of circular economy through three exciting modules. Each module consists of worksheets and fun games that students can do individually or in a group online. So if any of you, especially teachers, interested to find out more about the online education platform, please don't hesitate to contact us for chat. There's also a link at the bottom right corner to access the education platform. I would also like to thank you Hong Kong, Macau International Exchange Foundations to support us with the promotion. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.